Thank you for joining us today at Miniature Wargaming Lab, where today we will be painting one of Spectre Miniatures' Aftermath models. So, to get started, I primed him with Krylon Color Max Gray Primer. I normally pre prefer Games Workshop's uh, Mechanicus Gray. Um, I will also use Army Painter's cheaper uniform gray, but when you're working with metal, and if cost is an issue, gray primer from Krylon works just fine. Just make sure not to spray it too much or too close because it will swamp out all the detail. So, uh, in this model, uh, and in this painting series, we don't use contrast paints, we don't use technical paints, we just, we just use the standard paints you get in the WizKid starter sets, the Games Workshop starter sets that you find in Barnes & Noble, something you can find at your friendly local game store. But to do the yellow, started off with a base of Iron Arc skin over the gray, then went Ural yellow and worked my way up with a blend of Ural yellow and white, and then finished off with a highlight of Iron Arc skin again to give it that glossy a uh, plasticky look of a used Mop 4 biocontamination suit, but in yellow. Uh, the gloves and the gas mask are coal black with highlights of Fenris gray, just a dark gray with little blue tones. This coal black is a black with a little blue tone to it. The satchel is Abaddon black with a highlight of Army Painter Ash Gray, a light gray color. And his little green tactical vest is Wall Flesh and Moot Green. And his, li his little submachine gun here, that is Vallejo's glossy black with spot edge highlighting of pallid witch flesh, a white to show the reflection. And the reason I went for three different types of black is just because I didn't want them to look similar. Oh, and over the, yeah, I did that Fenris gray highlight on the coal black. That's right. All right. So with this model, you might say, James, why didn't you use Nolan oil? I don't like to use washes on yellow. That's why I had so many mixes of yellow to build up. Yellow is hard to work with. It's not fun. But you can see how I did it. Got the proper balance between, you know, a new uniform versus something that's served in the field. But not too much dirt. I'm still trying to decide what I'll do for the base. But let's go ahead and get started on this one. So to start off, you can see I painted this model gray. Um, the reason I did that is because some parts of the model are going to go to black or dark green and other parts are going to go yellow. So it's basically going in two different color directions there. But to start, I'm going to focus on the yellow first because yellow is always the hardest color to do, to get on smoothly. So I'm shaking up my iron rack skin. Now it would have been better if I primed this white, but I have horrible luck with white primers. It always forms this powdery coat on it, which I dislike. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick out the areas that I want yellow. And I've got just a rough brush that I've messed up in the past. And I'm just going to scrub over roughly. Remember, if I slip over into like the vest, which I want black, it doesn't matter. I'm going to paint with black. Black covers everything. But his basic uh, Mop 4 biocontainment suit is going to be all white. Alright, so I've based the parts I want yellow with the white. Now I'm ready to paint the yellow over it. So I'm going to use Ural yellow, and I'm going to put it on similarly to how I did 
white. Alright, so I'm just going to take a brush I've messed up in the past. And I'm going to start just putting it in there. So as I go around the model, I wanted to point something out. So you can see on the bottom part of his gear here, the yellow is brighter. And up here, the yellow is dingier. So this is the difference between two coats of paint and one coat of paint. So that's even painting it with a white under it. So yellow is very hard to get on smoothly and to the you know luminosity that you want. Just takes several applications. So you know, three, four thin coats. That's why I put it on first. Alright, now I've got the yellow down to the level I want. At this stage, I would normally wash the model to uh, something like null oil to um, basically highlight, well, to sink in the recesses so that the raised surfaces pop and give some depth to the model. However, since I'm working with yellow, I've never really been able to get that to work. Or if I do, it'll create such a dingy look that I'm not looking for. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my Ural yellow, and I'm just going to do highlights instead. This will give it a brighter effect. So I'll take some yellow here. my paint palette. Then I'm going to take some pallid witch flesh, shake that up, and So basically I'm looking for a lighter white. Alright, then I'm going to take my fine point brush, get some yellow in it, and here what I'm going to do, so you can see the little folds in the suit. And I'm just going to run the tip of the brush or the flat part of the tip across those folds to bring that color out. And since I used the gray and some of the gray gives it a dingy color, I don't need the wash because now that I've got a brighter yellow riding on top, the more layers of the yellow you put on, down, the brighter it'll get. That'll take the place of the wash, because the, the recessed areas will look dingy because of the gray primer. So that's normally what I look for in the wash. And I'll create that shadowy effect. So you can see the highlights are already working. All right, so I've got the yellow down, yellow highlights down. Now I'm going to start picking out the parts. Uh, going to be the gear attached to his hazmat suit. So I'm going to use some Abaddon black, and I'm going to say he has black boots. Now at this point, since I've got the yellow down, I have to be extremely careful 
not to touch the yellow, especially with the black. All right, now I'm going to pick out the pieces that are going to be the rubber. So his gloves and his face mask. So for that, I'm going to use coal black. Now, it is black. However, it's got a tint of blue. And some of the... Um, hazmat like rubber gloves have that shiny reflectiveness to them to show that they're rubber and so I want to make sure that there's a distinction between the rubber and the other webbing gear so I'm going to use a slightly different tint of black which is why I'm using the coal black All right, now I want to do his little webbing vest. So I've got black on the boots, coal black on the gloves, and the gas mask, chem bioprotective individual respirator. And I have thinking with his vest, I don't want to keep on running with black. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some wall flesh. It's a really dark green. So I'm going to start by just running the edge. of what I want green. I find it's good to do this early and then you can fill in the model where you want because you'll start losing attention. It might slip into the yellow which would not be good. All right, so we have our little green vest on there. Next, I'm going to use some gloss black. And what I'm going to use that for, just need a drop of this, is I want his little weapon system to be black, but I want to be different from the rest of the black. So this gloss black will give it just a little more shine than the other blacks. So finished up that part and I've now put my model on a paint handle because I kept touching the yellow parts and getting black and other paint on them. So I should have been using this before. Now I am. Alright, so next I am going to put on some Abaddon black and this is going to be for his little satchel. So we'll shake this up. Now we'll start putting on our black. Being careful not to touch yellow with it. Alright, so we have all our base colors done. So now we're going to move on to highlighting to get this little guy to pop. So, first color I'm going to highlight with is my ash gray and that's going to be on the black. So I only need a spot of this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my brush, I'm going to wipe some of the paint off and I'm going to use the flat of the brush and just run it along these flat edges here.
and then create some farther folds. All right, so I finished highlighting the bag in ash gray. Now I'm going to do, and his boots, I decided to throw his boots in there. Now I'm going to do the aspects of his mask and his gloves, so the rubber parts. And for that, I am going to use Fenris gray, so a darker bluish tinted gray. I'm going to do the same thing, just the flat edge and highlight pretty much the fingers just so that when I'm standing you know three feet away from this model you can still see some of the details focus on the areas that are up higher towards the light and this is good on the black because it allows me to see all the black details these goggles alright so now that we highlighted that let's go on and highlight this green vest and for that I'm just going to use some touches of moot green And since it's so bright, I don't want to use a lot of it. Once again, flat other brush, just the top edges. So we can make these pouches pop out some. Okay, so I got the green to make that pop. And now I want to do the gun barrel. And to make it look different, I'm not going to use the gray. I am going to use Pallid Witch Flush. And here I'm just going to do a spot highlight. So, you're like using the flat, just run somewhat along the barrel, along the magazine. And I'll use it to dot the little lenses in his eyes. So, just using the tip of the brush, boop, boop. There, I've got a little reflection popping out there. Now the last thing I am going to do is highlight the yellow. And I was saving that for last on purpose. I am going to use the iron rack skin again. I wanted a duller yellow to highlight. So, remember I used Dural Yellow, then a white and the yellow, and now I'm going to use an off-white. And this will help from where I touched it with my fingers. I can just make it look like it's part of the reflection from the plastic or rubber of his suit, and cover up my little finger mistakes. And this is just the very heights. Using the flat of the brush, just get the various, very heights of the fold of the yellow.
Whenever you see me touch it with my finger, I'm either trying to smudge it to make it look worn or get some of the paint off, because I want to make it look new, but not too glossy, like they've been out for a day. Alright, so I'm going to call it a day on my Aftermath guy, and I'll take care of the base later. Got to figure out how I'm going to base him. Desert or woodland. But this should look pretty good from three feet away. Got enough contrast between the colors. Alright, well thank you for joining us at Miniature Wargaming Labs, and join us next time.